So, hello and welcome. This is, uh, again, another one of those uh, extra little videos. And this particular video is on something called the Rayleigh Criterion. Okay? Um, now, in some papers, it kind of tells you what this is in the build-up to it. Um, although, in that definition, which is obviously the AQA specific definition, they want you to learn word for word. Excuse me. It's not the best definition, I think, that you can learn. Okay, so um, in essence, what it says, I'll read out word, I'll say word for word what it is, and you can kind of understand why it's not very helpful. Um, it says when the when the central minimum, central maximum, sorry, of uh, of one life source crosses over the central minimum of another. Okay, central uh, the first central the first um, dip. Right word. Um, yeah, the first central peak of another. Okay, so what does that actual actually mean in terms of a graph? Well, why is it talking about peaks and troughs? We're talking about peaks and troughs because we're talking about this graph here, weirdly enough, what I've drawn, and it's an intensity graph against angular separation. Okay, so we've got uh, pi, three quarters pi, half pi, quarter pi, zero. Okay, um, and this kind of is a diffraction pattern essentially. So you should be fairly familiar with how this works. Okay, so we've got a peak here. This is the central peak because it's twice as wide as any other normal peak because you're considering the half the peaks on this side, half the peaks on that side, so it's twice as wide as any of these other peaks. Okay, so we've got another peak here, another peak here, these two are the same height, another peak here, another peak here, and these two are also at the same height. Okay, so in a different colour, because I've found some colours, we're going to draw what this, what this other part of the definition says. So, the other part of the definition says it's when the uh, central maximum of another source crosses over the first minimum of another. Okay, so say this is our current light source here, and it's going to cross over the central minimum, first minimum, which is this here. Okay, and we're still going to have this pattern, so... It's just going to be kind of out of phase, something like that, okay? So when it crosses over here, it's going to look something like that. And then carry on the diffraction pattern. And bear in mind, in that particular diffraction pattern, that would be the central maximum, okay? So that's what it looks like. Um, I don't think that's very helpful in understanding what actually is the really criteria. In other words, why did they come up with it? Why did they make you learn it? Okay, well, again, there's a good reason for that. So, why why do we use it? Well, um, light sources, as you know, are preferably uh, generally stars. Okay, is the, the most is is the light source um, that you 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 most likely to be talking about here. Okay, um, you know, I suppose to any other light source. But anyway, um, so. We've got two light sources here, and the best way to describe it is using this diagram here that I've drawn. Oh, drawn it again? Mm. How good am I? Um, yeah, so basically, it's it's the smallest angular separation to be able for us to distinguish that there's actually two separate light sources there in the first place. Okay, so if we've got two light sources, I'm just going to represent a light source by rather um, unhelpfully a dark circle okay so we've got two dark circles here okay so this is what you might see on um, a CCD perhaps okay so we've got two light so we've got two dark circles there in other words two light sources and you can see because they're kind of quite far apart there's quite a distinguishing distance okay so you can see that's definitely one that's definitely another okay so you can definitely tell the two light sources here. But remember, this Rayleigh criterion says it's the mingular, minimum angular separation. In other words, the minimum separation between two light sources for you to be able to physically distinguish that there are two light sources there. Okay, so if we draw it here, granted it's going a bit pear shaped now, but you can still clearly see there is two light sources here. And then we keep doing that and doing that until we get something that looks like this.
Now you know that they're two light sources because I've drawn them as two separate, as two light sources. I've drawn one on and then just one next to it. But if you just looked at that, okay, without this help, you can't say it's two light sources. So how does this help us? Well, this helps us in distinguishing at what point do we call it one light source and what point do we call it two, okay? So here, you can see, because there's a, like a, a bubble there, that there is two, because it's upside, there's two there, which is kind of highlighted more by this. Now, I've drawn these circular lines coming away because they are diffraction lines, because, well, this is a diffraction pattern, okay? And each bump of these represent each kind of line represents a bump, a maximum, okay? And obviously, the two in the middle there represent the central maximum, okay? So hopefully that's explained it to you. Um, I tried to shorten it down, but if I couldn't, I'm sorry. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.